Someday this will be us. Well, today's a wet one. Uh, we all be able to find out if some of our uh, taped off areas are gonna stop leaking. That'll help. We've, we've been wanting to come to the boat on a rainy day anyways, so we can kind of see where some leaks are coming from. So this will be good. Won't be doing any outside projects today. I was planning on doing some fiberglass in around some of the port light cutouts, but not today. So that's all right. We've got plenty of inside projects to do, so it's all good. And I can still get the rudder bolts out. I want to pull one of the bolts out of the rudder mount and uh, take it and see if I can have some, some ordered. So it's all good. back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Someday this will be us. Well, today's a wet one. Uh, we all be able to find out if some of our uh, taped off areas are gonna stop leaking. That'll help. We've, we've been wanting to come to the boat on a rainy day anyways, so we can kind of see where some leaks are coming from. So this will be good. Won't be doing any outside projects today. I was planning on doing some fiberglass in around some of the port light cutouts, but not today. So. That's all right. We've got plenty of inside projects to do, so it's all good. And I can still get the rudder bolts out. I want to pull one of the bolts out of the rudder mount and uh, take it and see if I can have some, some ordered. So it's all good. Here at top, Monsai, welcome back to another episode of DIY Nautical Dream. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. Together. Together we make DIY, DIY nautical, nautical dream. dream. We're up here up top, Mount Sai. Yep. Beautiful view up here behind us. You can see I-90 behind us in the background. And then way over there, right there behind us. Mount Rainier. That's Mount Rainier. We were just up there two Plus, weeks ago, yep. up at Camp Muir. So today we're doing Mount Sai. I love it easy. Anyways, hope you enjoy the video. See ya. It'd be really cool if a bird would just come eat out of my hand. Let me see if I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hi guys. Hi guys. So welcome back. Um, continuing to our DIY project, we discovered a big damage. Oh my gosh! To yeah. our trolley <laughs> overhead. Yep. So yeah, we're in deep now. We're in over our heads, uh, figuratively, <laughs> and all that stuff at the same time. Uh, we have. We have found large amounts of rotted plywood in the galley overhead area. Once we removed the large plywood around the large opening hatch and we started looking aft, we just noticed some big issues back there. And as we started removing more of the old plywood that was used to hold the vinyl in place, the whole ceiling can be lifted and pushed up like this. I could probably push my finger through it. So. We got to figure our way through that one. So this is not going to be pretty. This is a lot more than we ever thought we were signing up for. So you know how they talk about project creep. Well, the creep has showed up and uh, it's joining us in our project. So we, we'll we just continue to work through it. And, you know, we're not going to let it stop as a tourist. We'll just figure our way through. And uh, we just have to kind of step back and figure out how we're going to attack this. We'll get it sorted. All right. And then last time when you're trying to take out the big hatch, right? Yep. You broke, damaged yeah. it a little bit. More than a little bit. I broke the uh, large teak trim that was going around the large opening hatch and I was trying to pull that off and it was held up there with, you guessed it, 5200. Yep. And so uh, I was pulling with all my might, bouncing on it with all my weight, holding me off the ground and everything. and. Uh, parts of it came loose, but that was when we realized that we were uh, bonded in place with 5200. So I broke it, and yeah. now I'm fixing it, and I'm going to show you guys kind of yeah. how I how I put that it's back together. Repairing it. Yeah. And we are doing. Yeah. So next up was uh, we're going to repair our first opening port light. We're going to actually rebuild it, um, cut a new lens for it, put new seals in it seal everything into place and hopefully be able to get that back to the boat to be able to install it into place. So uh, yeah, it'll look good and uh, we'll just see what we can do to make those look like new again. All right, and so we're doing a new plywood around large hatch. Yeah, so we cut out our, our piece of plywood to replace the old rotted plywood we found around the large opening hatch. We did that at home. We take a little bit of work at home whenever we can to kind of help keep the project moving during the week. but. Yeah, so we made the new plywood for on the large opening hatch. We'll be able to test fit that in place and uh, hopefully that'll be a nice fit. And if that works, then we can continue on with that type of uh, copying of the old pieces of wood that we take off and make new ones out of them. So anyway, so we'll make that as well. So yeah, that should turn out good. All right. So last one. So one of the jobs on today's list, since it's raining out right now, was to uh, clean the oil out of the engine room, out of the bilge in the engine room. So we did that, vacuumed up all the nasty insulation that was down there, and took out the old oil absorbent rag pad and put a new one in. And then, uh, same thing over here. There was, down here I found a O-ring for the oil filter, which the oil filter is right there. And uh, so I think that might have been contributing to some of the oil on the base of the engine. Um, there was a pad over here also that had lots of oil on it and so I soaked all that up um, Captured everything here on the nice rags and so that's going to take care of that Now we can at least monitor and see uh, When we do eventually run the engine we'll be able to see where the drips are coming from If there are any which I'm expecting there will be so at least it'll give us an idea what we're starting out with So yep, yeah, that's it for that after finding that stray oil ring that looks like it came off of the oil filter, we're pretty confident that we found where the leaks were coming from and so it's good to have those cleaned up and we don't expect any more leaks in the future hopefully. If anything it'll be maybe a couple drips here and there but it's nice to have it cleaned up. We don't want any oil down in the bilge. Okay so if you remember from last week's video after we removed the rotted plywood from underneath the, overhead, the large overhead opening hatch area. We were looking around and we noticed that there was that rotted plywood just aft headed towards the galley area. And so now we're really starting to take a look at that and we're realizing that this is a lot bigger rotted area than we were thinking. And it looks like there's multiple leaks contributing to that rot, not just one. We thought that the 
large opening hatch was the water was the source of water that was causing those leaks but uh, this is above that plywood so the leaks are obviously higher than what the plywood was at so now we're really having to investigate this and it looks like we're going to have to do some cutting on that rotted plywood to get that out and figure out where the water's coming from it's coming from higher than that so this is really starting to spiral out of control now i mean just like wow this is going to be a big project i can tell so up in this area here you can see where there's some fasteners that are passing through the deck from up on top where some equipment's mounted down to it that seems like it's okay i thought it was leaking at first but it's not and then you can see this wood here they spliced a couple pieces together instead of making one piece well that wood's rotted so it's got to come out we'll make a new solid one piece and the wires are running parallel to it it just looks like a horrible design but we're not to re we're not going to redesign this area we're just going to put it back the way it was with better wood so here you can see the pieces that came out of there i don't know why they just it looks like they made made these out of scrap wood or something it's just really poor quality if you ask me but so these two pieces here could have been put together as one. I think their thinking was they're going to run the wire in between them like that. But anyways, we'll fix it. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're using the old rotted plywood as a pattern to make our new one. This is for around the uh, large opening forward hatch where it was really uh, rotted and all wet when we pulled it down. So we dried it out a little bit, secured it with some duct tape, and we laid it down, traced around it. And then we cut it out with the jigsaw and uh, it turned out pretty good and then we had to locate the center hole for it as well and we got that cut out no problem and then we went ahead and laid in the old broken teak trim ring that we uh, broke when we were trying to remove that because it was held in with all that 5200 but all in all it turned out pretty good I'm pretty happy with how this looks it's almost an exact duplicate of the old rotted plywood that we took out so I think this hopefully will fit in just fine. They look pretty much the same. And then we'll go ahead and paint that and seal it up with penetrating epoxy. And then we'll put a layer of paint over it right before we install it for the last time. But we'll have to check fit it, make sure everything's good. And anything needs to be sanded before we paint it and seal it. So, But we'll seal it so no water gets in there. Okay, so here we're doing a test fit of the overhead structure plywood replacement and it looks like it's a pretty good fit now we have coated this with penetrating epoxy to help seal it against any moisture penetration and we'll coat it again and then we'll do a final paint on it because we're gonna have to sand a little bit on the sides just to get a better fit so once we're finished sanding and fitting we'll do more uh, penetrating epoxy on it and then a final coat of paint just to ensure that no moisture is getting in there but I'm a little concerned looking forward here in this picture and you can see the rotted plywood that goes aft in the towards the galley section there. That looks like it's going to be a big problem for us. So now after we discovered that new section of rot back there, uh, looking back towards the galley, we had to open up the vinyl even further. And that means these lighting fixtures are going to have to go. And that's okay because Baby and I don't really like these anyways. We're going to try and replace them with something better. But this project is really starting to spiral now because uh, the more we open this vinyl, the more we see rotted wood, more moisture damage, and it just keeps compounding. So this is getting to be a bigger and bigger project the more we get into it, and this is not what we were hoping to find. So we had kind of ideas. There was something going on up here, but this is not, this moisture damage is not all caused by the large forward opening hatch. It's got to be coming from somewhere else, so we're going to have to keep keep exploring until we figure out where it's all coming from. Here we're looking aft to the galley overhead area. I have a feeling we're going to be spending a lot of quality time in this area fixing all the water leaks and rotted wood damage back here. Trying to track everything down is going to be a real good time. We're up for it. We like these kind of things. Alright, so what we're doing now is uh, you can see this plywood that's been tabbed in here with fiberglass tabbing. And then uh, I've kind of drawn an outline of it. And then I'm going to make a template and i'm going to cut all this out this the plywood out i'll cut it out and then i'll tab in some new plywood but i'm going to seal it with um epoxy and even maybe possibly fiberglass it so that it won't it won't be able to rot like this but this was kind of a horrible idea i don't like it but it is what it is at this point we're just gonna gonna replace it put it back as good as we can 
and hopefully make it better. And then um, the wood for around this hatch, I just have it kind of temporarily installed right now, but uh, yeah, that's a good fit. And that turned out really good. So, and I've sealed this, I've sealed this plywood with epoxy. And then uh, even before it goes up permanently, it's gonna get sealed up a little bit more with epoxy. Right now I'm just kind of test fitting it and pretty happy with it. So yeah, that turned out all right. But yeah, this is gonna be fun. It's gonna be a big fun mess. So, oh well. Okay, so we got the light fixture removed and we're taking measurements of it. And then we'll record the measurements and then I'll go online later at a later date and try and shop around for something that's gonna fit that size of a cutout. And hopefully it'll be something a little bit more nautical looking than that and a lot more attractive. So we'll keep that in mind for later. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is remove these rotted strips of plywood here. I think that all these are for, or really is just to hold the vinyl seams together for them to staple onto this and maybe for the lights to mount too. But anyways, we'll go ahead, go ahead and get this removed and see what we find up underneath behind that. Okay, and so what I always do before I remove these pieces of wood is I trace around them if they're gonna be attached to something. I wanna see where they went, exactly how they came off of there and how they locate going back on. So when we put the new pieces in place, we know exactly where they go. But yeah, here you can see the piece of wood after we took it off and it's rotted to the core. It is no good. With those sections of rotted wood removed, now we're gonna get ready to start cutting the rotted plywood away that's in the very overhead of the galley. And uh, we're gonna make a template. So we're making these templates first, and these are gonna be basically the shape of the piece of wood, that, the new wood that we're gonna put in to replace what we're cutting out. So I wanted to make a pattern before we go ahead and cut everything out just to be on the safe side. And we always add a little bit extra edge margin on all these so we have a little bit more instead of not enough. Okay, so we made our first cut into the rotted plywood up here in the overhead section of the galley. And uh, it's kind of interesting looking inside there. That was not what I was expecting. And there's a little bit of moisture in there, but it didn't seem like it was enough to justify how rotted the plywood is. So we're going to have to keep looking into this a little bit. But let's see what's going on here. Okay, so now I need to go ahead and cut a little bit more of that fiberglass tabbing back because we really want to just end up with just a little bit more you know, right around about a half inch of flange for the new plywood to rest on as we slide it into place. This is too much flange showing right here. I won't be able to get the plywood in there, the new piece, it won't fit in there. So I'm gonna take this multi-tool here and try and cut just enough of it to where we only end up with about a half inch of extra flange. And so I'm trying to line up the cut right here and making my first cut in there. I'm trying to be a little bit careful, but uh, it's a little bit tricky. So you can see I speed up the film here a little bit and uh, making the cut now, I find, finally figured out the way to do it. And it's cutting pretty good. These multi-tools, if you haven't used one, they work really good. They, they're multiple use tools and you can put all kinds of different blade attachments on them. And right here we're using a, a really aggressive cutting blade on there. But they work really good for jobs like this and because uh, I, I don't want to get in here with a grinder. As it is, a multi-tool makes a lot of a lot of dust, but it's not as bad as if we're going to be in there with a grinder or a cutting wheel. So it works out pretty good and it gets into these tight areas really well. So here you go. We can see that we're just about done cutting that. We should be able to take the piece out. And there it is. It should be ready to come out now. A little bit more cutting. And when I made the first cut to get the first piece of wood out of there, man, stuff was flying all over the place. These, this plywood's totally rotted. It's just flaking off and peeling off all over the place. All right, so there you go. There's the uh, fiberglass tabbing that we cut off, and we'll just throw that piece away. Okay, so now with that section of fiberglass tabbing cut away, you can see where the arrow's pointing to right there. We left a little bit like a half inch of edge margin flange hanging over and we're gonna use that to support our new piece of plywood that we're gonna put in there. So here I'm just kinda of doing a little general visual inspection of the area after we got done doing the cutting and clearing away a lot of the loose pieces. of. There's some big pieces of wood that are still laying in there. C clearing those out. Baby's over here to check it out. She's seen me making a big mess over here and making all kinds of noise. And, so she wanted to get up and see what's going on. She's like, 
worried I'm going to destroy the boat and cut through all the way till we can see daylight through there. But I was careful and didn't make any holes, any extra holes in the boat this time. So here you can see what it looks like. So now with that flange fiberglass tabbing cut off, we can see in there a lot better and see what's going on in here. And uh, wow, we're really getting in deep now. This is definitely out of my skill set. I'm just kind of getting concerned how far we're getting, getting into this now. But we got to fix this, so we got to figure out what we're doing. We're learning on the fly here, people. So we decided to use the aft cabin as a workshop. So we're going to go ahead and cut our first piece of new plywood that's going to go in where those tabs are, the fiberglass tabs. This new piece of plywood's going to rest on that, and that's going to be the first piece to close off the new opening section. So we talked about these pieces of plywood earlier and how they had them into two pieces for the wires to run through the middle of them. We didn't really like that idea, so we made a, a single piece back in the workshop in the aft cabin out of new plywood, and we're going to test fit that in there and see how the difference, see, see if we like the difference or not. So we're going to go ahead and put that into place and see how it fits up, and actually it fits in there pretty good, so I think we're going to go ahead and go with this new idea instead of having it going into two pieces angled together, and we'll go ahead and we did the check fit on this. We'll go ahead and pull it back down and we'll coat this with penetrating epoxy and paint it so no water can get into it or damage it. So now with our first section of uh, replacement plywood cut, we want to do a test fit on it and see how it fits that new opening with the flanges that we trimmed back and see how this fits into place. So we're going to do a check fit on that real quick. Okay. So I was a little concerned if those flanges were going to be strong enough to support the wood or not, but clearly they're plenty strong and this is a really nice fit. I'm even surprised at how well this fit. And now I have a little bit of confidence that we're going to be able to close this area up in a nice way and it's going to be nice and solid. This was a really big relief for us right here. So we're just continuing to do a check fit on it and see how it turns out. We'll take that piece of plywood out and we'll coat that with penetrating epoxy on both sides, edges, and seams, and then we'll also paint it so that no moisture is going to get back into that and cause any delamination or rot in the future. So here's a couple of still shots of that new piece of plywood and how well it fits in there. You can see that this is a really nice, tight fit. It's almost like it belongs in there. So we did a really good job cutting that out and notching it and making it just so those flanges were just the right amount of width. If they were any wider, we wouldn't have been able to get it in very well. If they were any narrower, it probably wouldn't be enough strength to hold it in place. Our plan is to fiberglass tab that into place eventually, but here you can see we still have more areas to cut out, more sections to make new templates for, and we'll get those in there, but we just kind of want to feel good about what we've done so far before we go cutting some more of this out. I'm not enjoying any of this cutting part, I can tell you that right now. It just makes me nervous. But it's good when we have a piece that fits in there as well as that did. Here you can see the opening after we pulled it back out. Taking a look inside here with the flashlight, we just cut out the next section. And we're looking around in here with the flashlight to see what's going on in here. And this is really odd looking. The way they put everything together, it looks like they just jammed a bunch of really thick epoxy as their sealer. Kind of crazy. So we're looking around in here because we know there's other leaks in this area because that plywood is rotted from the top down. And so we know the water's coming in over the top somewhere inside here. Well, so as soon as we started looking around, we were checking out that thick and epoxy sealer they used to seam everything together. And we can see daylight right through there. So it looks like to me like that's a clear leak there if I ever saw one. So here's a really good example of what the plywood looks like on the top side. This is the inside of the cavity here where the top side of the plywood is not exposed from below. And you can see how the wood is just delaminated and ruffling up on top of itself and separating because of the moisture has been sitting and pooling there for a long time. And it's just rotting and that's why the plywood is rotted in that area. Water got in there and had no, no way to get out until it just penetrated the wood. 
This here is a view of the bottom side of one of the electric winches from up on deck. So this is access to get to that. Here we're kind of taking a look aft and towards the galley overhead area with the new piece of plywood sitting in there. Just kind of looking over everything and taking it all in and thinking to myself, wow, with all the stuff the surveyor was freaked out about when we tried to get him to do the survey on the boat, he never once mentioned the galley overhead on this boat. Imagine what would happen if he would have looked at this. He'd have lost his mind twice. Anyways, we're not going to lose our mind, but we are in over our heads for sure. And we're definitely learning on the fly, but we'll figure it out. This is what we do. This is why we're DIY. We've got to figure our way through this. So here what we're doing is we're taking one of our newly made cardboard templates. And this is a substitute for the plywood. Once we know this cardboard will fit good, then we'll take it and we'll go cut the plywood. And it's a good thing we do this test fit with the cardboard because we're finding out that it does not, it may go in, but it will not come back out or it will go in, it'll come out, but it won't go in. So what we had to do with this piece of cardboard is had to cut it into two pieces. And so that means the new plywood going in is going to also have to go in into two pieces and going in sections as well. And then we'll butt them together with thickened epoxy in the middle and we'll fiberglass tab them over the top and bottom and they'll be as solid as one piece. So here we're using one of the old pieces of plywood that was kind of rotten and we took it home and we're going to go ahead and use that as a template. We're going to make an exact replica of it even with the groove cut in it for the wires to run through it and we'll cut that and make a new one and then we'll epoxy coat that seal it up we'll put two coats of penetrating epoxy on it we'll seal it up and then paint it and it'll and we'll locate the holes exactly the same as they are off of this and then it'll be a swap out put right back in direct fit part okay remember a while back when i broke that teak trim ring that was on the overhead uh opening hatch the large hatch up forward there that i tried to remove you know the one that was held in with the 5200 that wasn't going to come loose no matter how hard i tried and pulled I even hung all my weight off of that thing and balanced and balanced and it would barely move until it finally snapped and broke. Now it's time to see if we can put it back together and make it good as new. And if we can do it right, hopefully we won't even be able to tell it was ever broken. So wish us luck and let's see how we can do this. Okay, so the first step is to mix up some thickened epoxy and I mixed up some pretty thick stuff this time because I want to make sure that it fills in all the voids because we're missing a few pieces here and I want to make sure it fills in good. So we mixed up some good thick epoxy, placed all the pieces together the best we could, tried to line them up so there was no cracks showing, things like that, and then clamped everything into place and just let it cure over time. And it looks like it's going to hold pretty well. Um, like I said, there's a couple pieces that are missing, but we're hoping that once everything's all cured and I can sand it a little bit better, these seams and cracks may just go away and we might be able to get away with this not even looking like it was broke. But we'll see how it turns out after we get a chance to sand it a little bit. Okay, so we went ahead and hit it with the Orbital sander and it sanded up pretty well and then we did a little bit of hand sanding on it too. And I'm telling you, it's looking pretty good. I know that this didn't hide all the cracks and stuff like that, but it looks a lot better than it did once we sanded off the old varnish. One problem that I notice is we're missing a piece out of one of the inside corners and it's a pretty big piece. So I don't know if we're gonna be able to make this look good as new, but we're gonna give it our best shot. We're gonna to have to try something tricky here. Okay, so one of the tricks we're gonna try here is we're gonna take some thickened epoxy and we're gonna mix in some teak sawdust with it as well. The trick here is to not mix in too much sawdust or else it'll make it too dark. And when the epoxy cures, the sawdust section will still look like it's wet and dark and it won't blend in with the rest of the wood. So we went ahead and got that mixed up and applied it in there and we also made it a little bit of proud a little bit proud of the surface so that when we sand it it won't it won't concave it'll be level with the surface so it'll look natural and we're going to try and make this look as non-damaged as possible when we're done with it. It's going to be a little bit tricky. I'm not sure how it'll come out. This is my first time trying it, but we're going to give it our best shot. Okay, so now we got the thickened epoxy on there with the uh, teak sawdust mixed in with it. We got it applied and we're going to position this uh, window frame to sit so that corner is low and we'll let it cure like that and then we'll come back and sand it later after it cures and sets up. Okay, so now it's been cured, it's been sanded and re-sanded and re-sanded and then we applied varnish 
and sanded and applied one more coat of varnish on it and this is what the outcome looks like. Can you tell where it was at? Can you see the repaired inside corner? It's there. You can see it if you look really close, but otherwise you wouldn't know it's there. So this turned out pretty good. This is one of these little tricks of the trade that we're going to remember for down the road. Okay, so now that we've got the large teak opening hatch trim repaired like we wanted to, now we're going to move on to making our window lenses for our opening port lights that are in the aft cabin area. Been wanting to do this for a while, so we're going to go ahead and start cutting our lenses for these. Okay, the material we're going to be using to cut our lenses from is a sheet of cast acrylic, and it's smoked, so it'll give us that tinted window look to it when it's done, which is kind of what we were looking for. And so the, we're using the router with a flush trim bit, cutting bit on there, and it's got a following wheel. And so what we'll do is we'll clamp the old lens onto the sheet, and then we'll use the router to follow that pattern, and it should cut an exact, an exact replica of the old window lens. And then we'll be able to see how that looks. We'll sand it, smooth it a little bit, make sure the corners and the radiuses all look good, and then we'll see if we're going to be able to put this together. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, this stuff really makes a mess. It sprays uh, shit, shreds of acrylic everywhere, so little snowflakes all over the place of acrylic, so it makes for fun cleanup afterwards. Okay, well speaking of making a mess, now this is really one of the messier parts of the, doing this whole port light rebuild is actually putting the lens in and then sealing it and caulking it really well so that it doesn't leak in the future and so that we have really good coverage and really good squeeze out. And yeah, it makes a mess. So you want to be wearing rubber gloves and you want to make sure that you're doing this in an area that it's not going to stain or get attached to something you don't want it on. And so we got it all, we got the lens and the, the whole assembly and the frame assembly together and then we clamped it up really good. Not too tight, we want to leave a little bit of seal in there so we don't want it all to squeeze out, but we want to get it snug enough that there's a nice adequate squeeze out all the way around and then everything's going to fit up really good when we're all finished. Okay, so now that that's all cured and everything's good on that, now we want to apply the last step and this is going to be inset the new sealing rubber gasket. And I had to buy this in bulk material online because I couldn't find the original anymore, but this is a close second and it looks like it's going to work out really well. This is another messy process. You want to use enough seal underneath the, the rubber gasket when you put it in there that you get some good adequate squeeze out around it because water has been known to leak between these seals as well. And so while we do that, we put the seal in there, get a lot of squeeze out, wipe it off, clean it really well, and then we go ahead and close the hatch. And we don't close it down super tight. We close it down just enough to where the seal is making contact on all surfaces all the way around. And then let that set overnight. And then we clean off the excess squeeze out in the morning. And then we're good to go. This thing's ready to be put in and good as new. Okay, so, so far we got one port light completed and uh, it's been sealed back in there. Uh, we cut out a new lens for it. Sealed everything back together, uh, put new seals in it even, so had to get new seal all the way around here, all this seal around here, had to find that online, sourced it through marinedepot.com, they have it on there, so if anybody's looking for that, and then um, what we have here is uh, I went ahead and opened up the mounting holes with uh, thick and epoxy and then well actually I drilled them open and then I, I, I injected thick and epoxy in them and uh, so it's pretty much ready to mount that port light back in there but can't do it until we have the uh, wood everything everything goes in at the same time the wood the port light yep but it's getting there so now we actually have two newly rebuilt port lights for the aft cabin so that's a good start these both look really nice the lenses look really good on them we're both pretty happy with how these turned out it's a very messy process but the offset is to sp save the money and not have to buy new ones and the new ones eventually leak anyway so it's just good knowledge to know how to rebuild your own port lights and so we're learning along the way but we have the knowledge now and we'll apply it to the rest of the ones we have to rebuild and we'll also make some extra spare lenses and we'll just keep those on hand for later on down the road should one get scratched or damaged or whatever we can just swap it out now that we know how to do these
So what we're doing here now is we want to go ahead and test fit the port light into the cutout on the boat. And then we want to re, we're going to trace around it with a permanent black pen, black Sharpie. And then we're going to locate the outside edges. And then we're also going to locate, we're going to put a little dot where each one of the new holes has to be. And then we're going to have to re-drill those holes and make sure those are good to go and got good thread grip and everything like that. And so we'll open the holes up a little bit smaller than the diameter of the new screws that are going to go in there so it has plenty to grip on. Okay so now we have one of our newly made aft cab antique panels and it has the cutout for the uh, new port light or the newly rebuilt port light and we're going to do a test fit on it and make sure the holes are located properly and the light the uh, port light screw holes and everything all line up which they do and this is what it looks like it's looking pretty good and uh, just imagine this with some nice varnish on it and installed back in the cabin and you know finished up looking really good this has come a long ways we've learned so much in such a short little time working on this aft cabin and these port lights so we're pretty happy with the knowledge we've gained so far everything's looking really good and now the wood the teak wood is actually looking better than the older panel does so we're really happy with all the changes we've made so far so here's two of the new panels that we, two of the new teak panels we made for the aft cabin. First here is a large aft panel, the one that's curved, slightly curved, that goes in the very back and it has the two opening port lights that mount in there. So here it is right here. We got a couple coats of varnish on it and it still, it still needs to be sanded and have more coats of varnish added on it. But man, so far it really pops. It's looking good. And then here's a smaller side panel as well. And it's got, looks like it has two coats of varnish on it as well. And we'll be adding more after we sand it and get everything mounted and make sure that it's a good fit. And then we'll finish these up and they'll be looking sharp. But wow, they already look good. We're really impressed with how these are turning out and our skills are getting better all the time. So we're learning how to make these better. And each time we make a new one, it's gonna be a little bit nicer than the last one. So here we wanted to set one of the newly rebuilt port lights into the new aft teak panel for the aft cabin. Man, that thing looks sharp. That's really looking good. Very happy with all this, how it's all turning out. These port lights look like they're new. The panels look new. That aft cabin's gonna really pop and look really sharp. Very happy. Can't say enough about this. Baby and I really like the way this is coming along and we can't wait to see these installed. Okay, so now it's time to take our newly made teak panel for the aft cabin to go ahead and try and install that and i'll tell you what it's a lot harder than it looks to get this thing installed because it's got to fit into a slot up there on the top there's these wood pieces of wood up there that have a little gap in them and it's got to fit in there and it's got to make the bend and the radius all at the same time so getting that lined up and getting everything to snap and fit into place is a lot harder than it looks and so we finally got that and i was able to get it in place with baby's help and we have it in there and then it's time to put the clamps on it and to hold it into place while we're trying to start locating some of these holes. But yeah, this took a lot of work. It was a lot harder than it looks. So it's in place. We got a couple of screws tacked in holding it in place. And uh, there it goes. It looks pretty good. I would say that's beginning to qualify for a thing of beauty status. Got to keep working on it, but we're getting there a little bit at a time. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And stay tuned, it's gonna be an ending project. Yep, it's like putting two mirrors together and looking at them, you can see forever. Well, that's kind of how this project's starting to go. So, uh, that galley overhead is probably the biggest concerning thing we're dealing with right now. And uh, we just got to try and get our get our mind around it and figure out how we're gonna how we're going to attack that but it seems like every inch forward we're finding more and more damage so all right stay tuned if you are not subscribed yet please subscribe down below Bing. and don't forget to like yep don't forget to like and we thank you for watching hope you have a wonderful day see ya now there's a nice looking shell i'd keep that one and what's that my idea Oh, we got a boat coming. Watch this guy. Nice. Dang. Five engines on the back. That was sweet.